This is Geometry, Chapter 10, Section 5, in which we will study tangents. When we talk about a tangent, all we're really talking about here is a line that intersects the circle in one point. It just touches the edge of the circle. It doesn't go inside. And that point where it does touch has a special name called the point of tangency. So here I have a circle for you. And I have a tangent line. And the point where it touches there, that's what we're talking about, the point of tangency. When we have multiple circles on the page, or in our diagram or whatever, any line that is tangent to more than one circle is called a common tangent for those circles. And they can be internal common tangents or external common tangents. Okay, The way you tell the difference between internal and external is whether or not the tangent line crosses the line connecting the two centers. Okay. So this tangent line, BD, does cross that. That would make it internal. Or BC, sorry. And AD doesn't cross in between the two centers. So that would be an external common tangent. If they don't put the line between the two centers on there, you can either draw it in, or you can just picture it in your mind. But the idea is, if your tangent line goes in between the two centers, that makes it an internal common tangent. If we have a tangent line, then it's going to be perpendicular to a radius that's drawn to that to the tangent line. So what this theorem is telling us is here's my tangent line, here's the radius that's going to the same point. Those two things are perpendicular. Okay, always. You have a tangent and you have a radius meeting at the point of tangency, then they're perpendicular. Okay. Tangent line will be or tangent line will be perpendicular to the radius line. That always is the case. So they're going to ask us, among other things, to decide whether we're looking at a tangent line or not. So they're going to give us some information here. We have a segment that we think might be a tangent line. And we have a radius. And we know how far this diagonal here is. The thing that looks like it might be a hypotenuse. We'll find out. Ooh, I just gave away the trick. You want to do Pythagorean theorem kind of things and see if it works out. So 12 is our candidate for the hypotenuse. 12 squared is 144. 6 and 8 are our candidates to be the two legs. 6 squared and 8 squared, 36 and 64 makes 100. 144 is bigger than 100. It's not equal. So it's not a right triangle. Since it's not a right triangle, that means it's not a tangent. Okay. That's one of the kinds of problems they're going to throw at us, is to see if we can determine whether we have a tangent or not. You're looking for a right angle, right triangle. Another kind of problem they're going to give us is they're going to tell us we're looking at a tangent and use that information to find a value for x. We have a circle. We have a 
tangent line and we have a radius and we have a hypotenuse. So our mission here is to figure out this radius point, a radius line. Well, Pythagorean theorem. Oops. Knew I forgot something kind of important. Okay. Pythagorean theorem gives us a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And especially helps if you make those into exponents like I was supposed to. Well, 14 squared is 196, 17 squared is 289. Do a little subtracting, and we find out what x is equal to. Let's do another one over here. Okay. Now this one looks a lot like the same kind of problem, but there's a catch. The 2 that we're given is only this piece right here. And we need to find this piece. Or we need to find x. Well, since it's a radius, the piece here is also x. Okay. So we're going to apply the uh, Pythagorean theorem again. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Okay. A common mistake here is people will want to make that 2x. It's not 2x. It can't be 2x. That would be multiplying, not adding. Another common mistake is people forget what this means. x plus 2 squared means x plus 2 times x plus 2. So when you distribute that, you don't get just x squared plus, six t or plus 4 there. You get x squared plus 4x plus 4. Subtract the x squareds over, and then they're gone. So we'll move the 4, and then do a little dividing. We find out x equals 3. Now this next theorem, by and large, is a common sense kind of thing, but we're going to state it anyway just to make sure everybody sees where it's going. If we have a point outside the circle and we draw two different tangents from there, the two tangent segments have the same length. Okay. If you were to have to prove this at some point, I would draw in a few extra lines, and I would think about making hopefully congruent triangles. Maybe having a right angle there and there, we have a hypotenuse, and we have legs, so hypotenuse leg makes congruent triangles. Just a hint, just something to think about. If it ever comes up, I don't know if it will or not, but you know me, it probably will. Since we know these two things are equal to each other by this theorem, if they tell me PA has a value and PB has a value, then I can write an equation that they're equal to each other Subtract the 2x over, subtract the 6 over, and we find out that x equals 3. Okay. We uh, talked about this next term a little earlier in the chapter, and we're going to bring it back up again. A polygon is circumscribed about a circle if all of the sides are tangent lines to that circle. So I have a couple that are circumscribed. Here's the circle, and all three sides of the triangle are tangent lines. 
Okay. Here's one with a quadrilateral. All of the sides are tangent lines. The, these are not circumscribed about the circle. Yes, these two lines are tangent lines, but the third one isn't. The three sides here of this rectangle are, but the fourth one isn't. So this wouldn't count for a uh, circumscribed circle, or circumscribed polygon. And we're going to use the idea of having circumscribed polygons to get to a solution for the perimeter of this thing, or an equation of the perimeter of this thing. Okay. The important thing here is since we know it's circumscribed, that means we know these are tangent lines. Well, if they're tangent lines, then they're the same on both sides of it. So if this is x, that is also x. If this piece is x, so is that one. If this is 5, then so is this. And 3 gives us 3 there. Now we can write an equation for the perimeter. Add up all of these sides. x plus 3 plus 3 plus 5 plus 5 plus x plus x plus x equals 48. Okay. I wrote it out the long way there just to show you everything going into it. Most of you will probably go straight to here, collect up the terms right away, subtract the 16 over, then do a little dividing, and find out that x is 8. With that information, we could then say if they ask us uh, how long is st, we could find that, because we know what x is. So tangent lines, lots of good stuff with tangent lines here. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in with you, and we will see you in class.